Have you ever got your hands on something or experienced something that everyone kind of universally loves and you just weren't that stoked about? You know, there are things in the uh, professions and the uh, hobbies that we have that everyone kind of universally loves. In the guitar world, it might be like a Gibson Les Paul or a Fender Strat. In the car world, it might be like a Corvette or a Mustang, though I know that a lot of people don't like Mustangs or Corvettes. But, you know, everyone kind of universally loves those things. Or, you know, a lot of people are into uh, football here in the States, um, American football or baseball. Um, but there are some times where, you know, everyone kind of loves this thing. They love this hobby. They love this product. And then when you get your hands on it or you experience it, you're like, meh. Um, sometimes you warm up to it, sometimes you don't. But today we're talking about a product that, guys, I have tried so hard to like, and I simply can't. And if you saw the title, you know that today we are talking about the Benchmade Griptilian. <clears throat> so I'm talking kind of quiet because my wife's still sleeping. She had a migraine, and so trying to um, speak a little bit of quieter and not wake her up. But anyway, we are going to talk about the Benchmade Griptilian, and uh, we'll get into what I like and what I don't like um, and uh, something unique about the product. So first, let's uh, talk about the specs of the Griptilian. So the uh, Benchmade Griptilian, it is made in the United States, which is a good thing. I do like American-made products. I think um, a lot of people here in the States like when something's made by the home team. Um, <clears throat> this is the 551 model. Uh, this is in S30V, if you can see that, it's probably not focusing very well. Um, it's an S30 fee. I always assumed these were clip points, but I guess the more I look at it, it's a drop point. Um, it does have a little swedge on the top. You can kind of see that. Uh, it has an FRN handle, fiber reinforced nylon, and it weighs just under four pounds at about 3.9 ounces. So the Benchmade Griptilian, you guys have seen reviews on it. You know people's thoughts. You know what your thoughts are. You probably own one if you're watching this video. Um, so there's not really any new information I can put out there, any new philosophies I can kind of throw at you. But um, so let's just get into kind of what, what I like first. So um, one thing I do like about Benchmates is um, this box. It's cool. Uh, it's nice. You get this box. It feels like they put effort into this box. Uh, you open it up, you know, and the, the knife is in a sleeve and, you know, it's got padding, all that stuff. So that's really cool. When you open it, when you get a bench made in the mail or you pick one up at the store, when you open it, it feels like you are opening quality. <clears throat> so that's one thing I really, really do like. Uh, also, this blade design. Um, I, I love that drop point. Um, there seems to be more belly on it. Um, then a lot of drop points, a lot of drop points have more straight edge. So I really like that belly. Um, I like the straight edge. It's really, really well designed. It is just a, it's a classic design. Um, it's got a pretty strong tip. Tip isn't too thin, but it's not too stout. Um, so detail work can be done just well. These things slice well, they, um, pierce well. So, you know, uh, the blade design is really, really well made and the steel you guys know S30V. It's a great great steel. I love S30V. So that's another thing I like. Um, another thing is the axis lock. Um, axis lock is a cool lock. I mean, you see how that just drops free and then it locks up and it is super tight. There is no movement up or down side to side. Um, so the axis lock is a really cool lock. I really, really enjoy it. Thumb studs work really well too. Um, they help deploy the knife if you want to do it that way. Again, it's very quick, uh, very quick action on that axis lock. Another thing I like about this knife is uh, it's the Griptilian, so there's lots of grip. Uh, this thing is not sliding out of your hand, that jimping on the top, which rolls through the blade. It's sharp, uh, the jimping on the bottom, you know, there's some traction right here, and there's some traction on the sides. Um, so this hand, this knife is not slipping out of your hand. It's super grippy, and that's great uh, when you compare it to something like uh, <clears throat> the Ontario Rat. Um, the Ontario Rat has good grip, too, um, because of that indent right there that locks your finger in and also because of that line of jumping on the top but it is not nearly as grippy as the um griptilian understandably <laughs> and the last thing i like about this when you look at this knife especially this this model with the uh, black blade and the black handle um it looks cool i think it's a cool looking knife i think it is uh it does look kind of tactical which again i'm all about uh, if a knife does it well and it's not kind of cheesy and i think this knife does it well it does the whole 
kind of militaristic law enforcement kind of look. It looks serious. It looks like business. And uh, I like this look. I like the look of this this uh, this black on black um, that coating would wear. I'm sure probably not as bad as some, but not as well as others. Um, but yeah, it's a good looking blade. And um, there's so many different models. Um, usually I prefer satin, but in this, I think I like the black. So. Um, that's where uh, the positives of what I like about this knife, um, you know, the things I, I actually do like about this knife stop. Um, overall, I don't hate this knife, but there's one thing I just cannot get over with the Griptilian. And I think a lot of you are probably shouting it at your computers right now. And it is the handle. The handle, while grippy, while comfortable, um, hand feeling, especially for someone with really big hands, it feels so cheap. It feels like it feels like a two dollar knife you pick up at a gas station, and this is the handle that they put on it. Now, let me put a disclaimer out there. I know that Benchmade has probably put so much thought into this handle, making it as lightweight as possible. I mean, it's under four ounces. You know, making it as quality as possible, making it as comfortable as possible. But the thing is, is it just feels cheap. And and there's a couple reasons why. So, first of all, I'm just going to put this up to the mic and I'm going to kind of do this. And the knife sounds and feels hollow. And when you deploy it, when you hold it, you get that feeling. It doesn't feel like a knife that's around 100 bucks, which is what about you're going to pay for a Griptilian, you know, a full-size one. You can get a cheaper one online. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, I just, I can't get over the handle. Um, the main reason I think it feels like that is, again, you know, they kind of hollowed it out and you can kind of see that, um, you know, th there, there are liners that go like, they cover about a quarter percentage of the handle. So they go down here and they kind of drop off right here. Um, but the rest of the knife is just, it feels plasticky, you know, because it is. And um, so the lack of steel liners and the lack of density of that handle, I think is what makes it feel like that. You know, it's not a really, really dense plastic. Um, there are some cold steel knives that just have plastic handles. The Pro Light is actually one of them, about a $20 knife. Steel doesn't measure up in 4160, not even close. Um, you know, the quality of the smoothness, it, you know, it doesn't really measure up. But the handle is an FRN, it's a plastic, and it doesn't feel like this. It doesn't feel cheap. Um, it feels smooth, it feels solid, it feels hard. And that, that doesn't have, that doesn't have, I'm tripping over my words, that doesn't have steel liners either. So I don't know what's done. I know it's probably done on purpose to make this as light as possible um, so that you don't have a real, real heavy knife. You're carrying one around, and, you know, you're not carrying around a heavy, heavy knife and you can kind of carry it more uh, and use it more. So it's probably done on purpose, but guys, I can't get over the way the handle feels. And I know they function well. I've owned a Griptilian in the past. Uh, I just picked this one up. Um, to, to see if I could kind of warm up in the past couple of days. I've, I've held it, I've carried it, and I just, I cannot get over the handle. I can't do it. Um, the next thing I don't really like is that pocket clip. So overall, the clip is designed pretty well, and I think this might be an issue just with me. Uh, when I hold it with my left hand, it's completely fine, but when I hold it with my right hand, and I am right-handed, for the most part anyway, um, this part of the clip, you can kind of see, digs into my hand fat, and this might be just my big beefy hands, but I don't like that. And the grip I used to own, I bent that end of the pocket clip down. That's honestly not a huge deal. Benchmade is so good with customer service. They're fantastic. They're a great company. They'll send you another clip. I think they'll send you a couple a year if you want. So I think you can get deep carry pocket clips for this. So it's not the end of the world and it might just be kind of the way my hands index the knife, but um, you may need to bend that, that area down. Um, Another thing I don't love about this knife is, um, while I do love the axis lock, I mean, I, I just love that that's so smooth, but it's also super strong. Um, when you first get an axis lock um, on most knives, the, the nicer ones probably aren't like this, the more expensive Benchmades, but yeah, I'm going to try it on camera. I'm going to thwack it really hard. And yeah, I, I have a really hard time pulling that down. Now, I've only owned this a couple days and I haven't 
haven't used it a ton. So um, that will smooth up with time. I know that. And in that will go away. But at first, it can be it can be a little bit difficult to actuate that access lock. So I don't love that about the knife. Um, so let's get into something unique about the knife. Um, <clears throat> usually the things that I've been saying about knives that are unique are, are kind of a positive about it. Um, but the unique thing about this, it's not super positive. Uh, Benchmade knives are expensive. Um, they're not terribly expensive. Some of them aren't. I think they're definitely, a lot of them are definitely worth it for the price, the materials. Um, I think part of what you're paying for also is kind of the lifetime warranty. They will service your knife whenever you send it in. You know, I've done it. They've fixed up and down play. They've um, adjusted grinds. They'll sharpen it for you. And they're really quick about getting it back to you. So I think that's fantastic. And I think part of what you're paying for that, you know, that is great. Um, but a lot of Benchmade knives are expensive. You know, this this full-size Griptilian is around 100 bucks. Um, for S30V steel, I don't think that's bad. I think this is a reasonably priced knife, but a lot of their other knives, the 940, uh, the Contego, um, you know, even the other model of Griptilian, which is in G10, has steel liners, is in 20CV, which is a knife I want to pick up because um, I know I would love it because I love the design of this knife. I just can't stand the handle. Um, you know, that's around 200 170 you know so so they're expensive um and you have to kind of decide when you're picking one of these up is it worth it is it is it worth it to have a knife that probably will last you forever but is it going to outperform so many other knives and there are other knives other companies that have good warranties um kershaw for instance their american stuff like this um blur I'll stop showing this. I've showed this so much on camera. Um, but, you know, they have really good warranties too. Uh, this is fast. This is, steel doesn't measure up. Um, but it's not a bad steel, 14C, 28 in. Um, it's smooth. The handle is aluminum. It doesn't feel cheap. It feels high quality. Um, you know, um, they have a good warranty as well. I know a lot of other companies. Cold Steel, personally, I've really had good experience with Cold Steel's warranty as well. Fantastic experience, actually. So um, you kind of have to decide, you know, do you like these designs? Are they worth it? And, you know, is that warranty and all that stuff kind of worth paying for? I think it depends on the knife, personally, for me. For some knives, absolutely, it'd be worth it. You know, I've owned a Contego. I thought it was a great knife. I sold it off just because it wasn't a knife that I used a lot practically. Um, but it was definitely worth owning to me, um, even at that around $200 price range. So, um, but personally for me, um, this knife, just because of the handle, the way it feels, it's not a knife I'm excited about. Um, I'm going to title this video, uh, The Benchmade Griptilian the best knife I love to hate because I just don't like it. I can't get into it. I want to like it so badly. And that's why eventually I think I'll pick up one of those G10 models because I know I'm going to love one of those. So um, overall, would I recommend it? It depends on if you can get over that plastic handle feel. Um, what I would recommend you do is go to a local knife store. Um, you know, with Amazon, you can get stuff in the mail and you can send it back, you know, free of charge. So um, that's a good option too. But go to a local knife store, hold one in hand, flip it around, see how you like it. If you're like, I can get over that, you know, I don't, I don't mind that plastic feel, then yes, I really would recommend it. Um, because I love the design of the knife. I just can't get over the plastic feel of the handle. You know, when I, when I pick up a knife and I hold it, I want to enjoy how it feels in my hand. I want to, um, be kind of proud that I'm holding this knife and this one just doesn't do it. So uh, a couple of options. Um, again, I showed you this earlier. This is the Kershaw Blur. This is a good option. It's cheaper. It's about 40 bucks cheaper. You can get this in a drop point or use it in Tanto. Um, you know, the steel's not going to hold up as well, but it's going to be a little bit cheaper. And to me, it feels better in hand. Um, and then another knife kind of in the same, uh, length range is the rat one um again i'll say it's not gonna hold a candle to s30v but you pick this up in d2 you're getting a little closer and you're spending less than half of what you would spend on a grip 
again, it's not American made, you know, it, it, it's heavier, it's a lot heavier, um, but it doesn't feel cheap. And that's, you know, because of those steel liners right there. But, um, you know, you just kind of have to decide what, what you want. If you want super, super light, but also, a, you know, a full size blade, comfortable handle, you don't mind the plastic handle, the grip might be for you. But if that plastic handle bothers you, I would say don't pick this up. Save up, save up a few bucks, maybe pick up the Griptilian in G10 with those liners, um, or pick up something else. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. I wish I could like the Grip. Maybe one day I will. Maybe I'll like that G10 model. But anyway, like and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.